So, we are right back into another Dragon Ball Super Card Game video, and this one is the start of all of my set six decks. I have quite a lot of them, and I'm making a promise, hopefully, because if I don't make that promise and I don't do it, it's gonna be kind of awkward. But if I'm going to be doing a set six deck profile within the next two weeks, I would say, I'm going to be including gameplay with it. I know that's something that I've been kind of slacking on and I've really been taking the time to do it. It's a little hard as far as my schedule, but oh well, that doesn't concern you. But after this, um, you can definitely go see some gameplay. Uh, I think Eggman kind of inspired, inspired me with his recent gameplay videos and just in general, I've been missing it. So shout out to him, shout out to myself, shout out to everybody. Subscribe if you're new. I have a lot of these decks coming out. Um, like, dislike, let me know what you think. Uh, description will have the time stamp for that. But this is Super Saiyan, well, Mono Yellow, Super Saiyan 2 Cooler. And um, yeah, there's a lot of variations of this deck, or at least the engine that plays this, but this is the list, as you can see here, I'm not gonna ma waste your time, I'm gonna go into it um, pretty quickly as well, because this, this, it's nothing new, it's, it's just something, another way to do it, and, and in my experience, and from my love for Gohan, um, it, and yes, it's not his archetype, but it is the cooler archetype, it, it, it works pretty good, I, I think it works pretty good, and I think there is a lot of room um, for ideas as far as this goes, but this is has this has been successful for me and uh, done pretty well So if you didn't know already, this is Super Saiyan 2 Gohan the one from the Bojack era I love him. I love him in the Goku outfit the Goku Gi and his auto is that he bursts too as just, just like the Goku from the Clash of Fates the green Goku when you attack uh, and it, it doesn't matter what you attack, you burst two, and then you choose one yellow card from your hand and place it in the drop area, and then you draw two cards. So figuratively, figuratively, you actually cycle through five cards in that one turn, in that one attack, and it goes through a lot. Um, not only can you change, you can you know choose one of the cards that you do place into the drop area from your hand, which could be one of the cooler targets, could be a Frieza, could be any of those things. But you also go through a lot of other cards and cycle through. And of course, his awaken effect is that you choose two of your energy and switch into active mode, which makes it pretty damn good as far as getting out of Frieza um, pretty damn quickly, <laughs> especially at four energy. Four energy is probably the sweet spot, just like with any deck. And I think that's what Bandai really wants. Four to five energy is when the game should stop, or at least get to the point of getting to your win cons. If you haven't been building your decks to get to that, or at least to get a, uh, around to that point, you should really consider, um, uh, rethinking how you want to do it. <laughs> and then we have his, uh, backside which is auto sparking five when this card attacks draw one card um so that's pretty simple and then you choose one yellow saiyan in your drop area and um a cost of three or more and add it to your hand and then you get the skill for the race in the game i wish you can do it every turn um just like black mass saiyan but i guess that's just not what bandai wants they just want you to not do that and yes you could get shigesh well no you couldn't get shigesh because i think uh shigesh is a uh, two drop, right? Yeah, he's a two drop. So you can't really get Shigesh. There's not really a lot of targets when he, when it comes down to that. There are a lot of specific targets um, within different archetypes. If you take a look at the three or more sort of um, aspects, so obviously the daily, the display of Gohan, um, the Path of Greatness, and a few others as far as the Swamp, uh, the big boy Goku over here as far as the Vanilla Boy, and then we have all these other ones like uh, Broly, like the new Broly stuff. Um, the new time to fight, which I'll go over in a little bit. Apes, which is, uh, you know, it's not really, uh, you know, it's, uh, you know, and then all these other ones like apes, the, the Gohan archetype, um, more apes, and then Hide of Mastery and stuff like that. Yeah, you could play Hide of Mastery in this, but um, that's not really uh, relevant. So that is the whole leader effect. Let's kind of go into the deck itself. And at the first glance, uh, again, if you're not familiar with the cooler archetype, I'll go over that pretty quickly. And if you are, it it looks very similar, right? It looks very similar. It just has a, a, a few different set six um, options that you could use as far as this deck or any other variation in this deck goes. So ignoring the Frieza Army Reborn, I'll explain that if you didn't realize already, but uh, we got the Fearless Assault Krillin for Quick Awakening. Um, I always have, there's, for some reason, this deck, either on untap or just in, in general, um, he, he really loves having Krillin in opening hand, like I mulligan him, him out, because sometimes I just don't want to awaken against a lot of different uh, leaders. 
but he just appears like i've had two or three krillin on board for no apparent reason it was just just wild so he is just here for a quick awakening you take a life and you get crit and 10k so that's pretty cool just like a, a tensifying power trunks master roshi is really important in this not only because you want to uh to stall out and kind of um survive until you get to the turn where you get the frieza out or either frieza really and um he's a battle card in which you can 5k combo after you negate and he is a target for the cooler. So um, yeah, Chuck really wants the credit for that. So I'll, I'll shout you out here, but I will let you know it's not it's not something that's um, you know new. <laughs> Master Roshi, as far as the negate the previous turn, and then right after that, Frieza or the uh, cooler to use him as a target to uh, warp him out out of game, and then get the Frieza out is pretty much the 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 play here. But Ox King Data Heart is really, really good in this because you have a uh, barrier for three costs or less. Uh, so any other yellow battle card for three costs or less gain barrier. And that's super important because Krillin is protected, Master Roshi is protected, and as well as our uh, most important card, which is Secret Evolution Cooler, is protected with barrier. Yes, there are a few things that get around barrier now coming into set six, but I do believe this is enough in the first few turns for it to not die. And that's kind of like the biggest thing for this. Um, please don't die. It's like it's like protecting a child. Like you, like babysitting, that's literally what it is, right? Like you, when you babysit, that's just, please don't die. That's literally what, what's happening there, right? You just don't die, child. Like, okay. Anyway, Flying Nimbus. Instead of Flying Nimbus, or instead of Time Magic over Flying Nimbus, this is really preference. In my experience, Flying Nimbus has been really um, effective. Because the, well one, um, I, I would say that mitigating an, a, as many attacks as you can uh, is more important than um, taking a life and then uh, countering. And it may not be even that, it could be a different scenario like going against Broly, that's definitely a sideboard card that you want to go through. I wanted to add a sideboard by the way, but I don't, I, don't, I think this is more of a casual deck than anything. I, I don't really want to show a sideboard for that. but. For uh, Flying Nimbus, as long as you can negate the, the leader effect and then go ahead and place one in the drop area, they can only attack one more time. And that's that's something really detrimental uh, when it comes to this deck and just protecting yourself. Here's the uh, card that is uh, specifically for the Yellow Gohan leader, in which this one uh, it gains 10k power for the race in their turn. Battle, I mean. But uh, if they have five or more energy in rest mode, this gains an additional 10k power for the race in the battle. I will let you know. This is probably the first card I will take out uh, out of this specific deck. If I was playing the Gohan archetype that rests all of their cards, um, like all their energy cards in rest mode, I would definitely play this because it's a effectively a, a one cost 20k combo. Um, but for defense, is a one cost 10k, and technically that's another you know pseudo super combo instead of like a unbreakable if i had to i would probably replace it for unbreakable so that way um you can just kind of get a draw but you know you find yourself that's not, not so much to be tapping out a lot but more of like um you know you don't you kind of want to not and it's hard, it's hard to, it's hard to explain but I, I just don't think it's that great of a card i think if you're trying to go for game and the situation is, is present in which you can get that 20k and go to 35 for your leader i think that's uh that, that's really good but i personally haven't played it in the bunch of games that i've played uh, as far as this goes and in the gameplay that you'll see you, you probably won't see it either divine cry beerus this can kind of be active as long as you have in your hand sometimes i actually um keep this pre-mulligan because I, I don't want to mulligan them out mulligan them out and as well as it helps me protect um uh, early into the game and not take so much life or critical or um uh, whatever but he has the sparking five combo which uh goes live like i said in the first couple turns and then we have the coolest squad squadron which you'll never play these either going to be charged or into the drop um this is it's good to keep this in hand at least one of them pre-mulligan simply because that um you know, you just can't trust the RNG as far as burst. It's really good, and it's really good for this archetype. Um, but sometimes, like even having eight of them, you only need three of them into the drop, uh, and you're cycling five cards per turn. It just doesn't appear, and that it gets straight up annoying. But this is kind of the the biggest thing that I would say to to kind of watch out for, and as well as. Uh, make sure that you have at least one in hand starting out. But if you had to play them, this guy is a blocker, and when it's KO'd, you remove this card from the game and then choose one uh, cooler squadron, which would be that guy, who is his auto, uh, and then you play it. And his auto is that you play it, he gains a double strike for the turn. It's a 15k double strike. I, I don't... Listen, 
Listen, man, these cars got power power crept so hard. I don't I don't know what to, I don't know what to tell you. Okay, we we got we got one cost that has double strike now. We got we got <laughs> we got, we got, we got cars that give double strike. What, what are we doing here? Anyway, uh, and then the uh, again most important card in the deck is the is the Secret Evolution Cooler, in which you play this card for three. Uh, it's a fifteen k, and as well as his permanent is that if you have three or more Cooler Squadron, which these guys at the bottom right, you can tell. Uh, our cooler, squad, cooler squadron and as well as in their name um, and there's one more I think if you take a look at the other uh, cards like cooler squad squad squadron squadron there you go <laughs> we have the uh, salsa and he's a 10k combo which is the reason why I did not include him these guys at the very least are combo power um, 5k's or zero cost 5k's for the combo power and then this guy is a four cost 15k double striker with 10k combo so i i i didn't want to i didn't want to mess around with that so that that wasn't really something that you want to do because you don't want to tap out um you want to have your energy as much as possible uh, open as much as possible to in our gate and as well as to play uh what you need to play so there you go and then uh again so uh when you do have three or more into the drop all cooler in your hand game involve three yellow and of course this is a molly yellow deck is very easy to kind of get that three yellow cooler over here is going to be the target for it uh and we'll we'll kind of go over that well actually we'll go over it right, right now so he has double strike thirty thousand. he's a seven cost but with him he is a three cost so you just evolve right after and then uh his activate is once per turn which is very very important to understand is that you remove one of your battle cards from the game not to warp but from the game just like dragon balls and, and shenron and you choose two of your opponent's battle cards and switch to rest mode, which can be useful sometimes. And you choose one Cooler Squadron, Frieza Clan, um, well, Cooler Squadron or Frieza Clan, sorry, other than Cooler, and then drop or from your drop area and play it. So the target gonna be is gonna be the uh, Frieza Emperor of Universe Seven, or gonna be the Frieza Armor Reborn because he they are both um, Frieza Clan. It doesn't have a specified cost. It doesn't have anything like that. Um, that's why it's super important super powerful your goal generally is going to be get to, to get him out uh, at the very least for someone to remove him uh, if you if he's just not attacking which most of the time by the time you get him out you're gonna be at a certain amount of life you're gonna be they're gonna be at a certain amount of life after attacking so many times either with Krillin or destructive occupation Frieza whatever um, uh, you're, you're gonna be attacking with him so that way they can take that triple strike or they take a life in order to counter that so the, the idea behind it is to protect yourself during that time uh, up to get to the Frieza and then after that time in order to for him to not die basically. Um, if they do remove it and their leader card does not remove it um, uh, themselves like anything that isn't playing Broly basically or the new Gogeta, they're going to have a hard time to remove it because they're going to have to take a life in order to counter the triple striking uh, 30,000 or to take a life and crit it by the way in order to uh, remove it because they're gonna have to use a skill from battle card or something else in order to remove it most of the time it's gonna be a from a battle card um, you know one of the new destruction rare destruction rares or another activate main and you choose one and KO something I, I don't know whatever whatever it is they're going to take a life and the thing is is that they're they most likely need to remove this man before they remove this man because this guy can just get another one out as soon as they K KO something this guy's gonna come out and I've done it before and I'm like Okay, you probably should have KO'd this guy. <laughs> so I'm just I'm just letting you know right now, fam. But that that's that's kind of the whole gist of it. And if you didn't know, again, he's a triple striking um, thirty thousand. In which your permanent is that if your leader card is yellow, they can't activate counter non keyword autos. Basically, any autos aren't keywords. <laughs> activate skills like activate mains um, uh, unless they play place one from one card from their life into the drop area basically critting so they can't attack with their leader and swing and draw they can't activate main and uh, ko something and again it doesn't matter they're gonna have to take a life in order to remove it uh but they really need to remove this man before anything else so this guy is thirty thousand double striking swinging this guy is thirty thousand triple striking swinging and if they if they uh, negate both of them they did they, they just crit it to life and then at the next turn if they, if they want to do anything if they want to do anything <laughs> that is useful they're gonna have to create a life another one and that's and that's pretty much the the, the entire gist of that um this whole archetype to to kind of get them out and play them out it's very fun it's very good ironically enough it is a counter to janemba even though you're bursting out five cards every turn but oh well right that's that's the whole part of it 
But Destructive Occupation Frieza is another option for a uh, cooler to warp out or put out a game. And he's good for defense, especially if they're going against, if you're going against like Krillin or Intensifier Power Trunks, this is probably the perfect card to play out right after. So that way you have two swings the next turn. I, I think that's just one of the thing the, the meta calls you have to kind of realize going into this next set and as well as just in general like it's good to have um, these 10k um, one cost free haunts quote, quote unquote um, so that way you have another body to, to kind of attack and to protect at the same time early game and then so of power is just another form of awakening I was going against a red freeze at one time it was just bad I couldn't awaken I couldn't uh, safely awaken in and get things going so that, that was just bad but uh i went ahead and added this guy for another target for gohan just so you can have another combo power piece but the real target is going to be the time of fight vegeta in which he's a blocker and then if your opponent has four or more cards in rest mode this is a one drop so you have a one drop 15k blocker which uh yet again it protects the frieza and just has a, another target for that so before uh this that's the whole deck by the way so the the you can kind of understand the, the the one to th three turns from master roshi dead at heart depending on what you're going against uh krillin for aggressive type of uh decks or slower decks uh getting these guys into the drop as soon as possible the, getting this guy out after you get this guy basically playing him on turn four or four energy awaken uh play him right after and then get the Frieza out and then just swing a couple times. That's basically the, the whole gist of it. You know, I'm, I'm not gonna waste your time to, to kind of explain that any further. But before I go into the gameplay, which I do have a game um, that I thankfully won, <laughs> uh, kind of showcasing the one and two, and I'll, I'll kind of commentate over that. Um, I, if I had to take this deck and kind of tweak it a little bit, if I could begin to tweak it, um, because like I said, I didn't really get too much use out of him, and the ratios for everything else is kind of eh. Um, let me know if you if you feel like there's any changes to be made, but this is kind of what the direction I would take. You know, reduce one of the Krillins, because I do have the source of power, add a Fu, so that way I have an alternate win con, and then add these two, the time to fight Goku, in which you, it's the same thing as the Vegeta, it turns into one drop after you um after they have four more cards in rest mode this is any card by the way battle cards energy whatever you place this card into the owner's drop you choose one or green yellow saiyan with the energy cost of three or less than 10k power which is going to be the explosive power goku uh some goku and then you can't play any cards or battle cards green yellow we, we only play yellow so don't have to worry about that this is just so you can have another body again to to take from the leader effect the awaken leader effect um, and then use him as a KO method because again, this is one of those decks that don't really have too much removal inherent removal or otherwise uh, Other than the freezer reborn which kind of wipes, wipes out everything <laughs> and uh, Yeah, that's pretty much it. I, I think that's kind of the best best way to do it um, and just to, to keep the the uh, the leader card useful the other thing is that uh, Minus Killy Zone might be good in the main, so that way this guy doesn't get Cold Blood or this guy doesn't get Cold Blood Since you are getting burst, bursted or you're bursting so much uh, into the drop, it is going to be a free draw and as well as uh, avoiding those people who are playing Woodless right now. But let's get to the to the gameplay. All right, here we go. So I'm going to go ahead and speed up all of this. Shout out to Zami, my boy. We played a few games. Uh, this is one of them. And uh, yeah. I already let him know, so there you go. He was actually playing a, uh, a pretty similar version of this deck, so it was technically a mirror match, and both of these decks are kind of non-meta, so uh, I think I thought it was appropriate to kind of uh, showcase some gameplay with that, and there were other couple, like, other games that I played, like normal decks, like Rudigan or whatever, but I, I just didn't, I just didn't record them. It was just one of those things. I was just like, I can, this is one of the first recordings, okay, just leave me alone. <laughs> Either way, uh, I started out first, as you can see. I went ahead and played the Krill in the next turn. Uh, I had the destructive, um, the destructive Frieza the the first turn as well. So if you went face with the uh, Krillin, the one that I'm using right now, I can go and combo that out and then make sure to have a body on the board to either attack something that he's going to be playing or just to uh, again to def uh, defend, just like I was saying before. And then uh, I went ahead and on the second turn play the Ox King, so that way I can get him out and. Um, build some barrier but unfortunately he went ahead and used the Bulma and then attacked it and I was just like well I have 
I have no answer to that because I'm tapped out. So uh, one of the things you kind of have to watch out for is to have two uh, Ox Kings turn two. If you have them, then I would definitely play the two Ox Kings first. That's probably the optimal thing that you can can do as far as that goes. And uh, I didn't want to play the um, the cooler here, uh, this three drop cooler, simply because it was just going to happen again. So I just went ahead and uh, went face. Uh, more often with the Krillins so that way I can actually have some more bodies on the board uh, for the cooler, cooler later and as well as to just the pressure so he can waste cards or waste the gates. And then this was just a, a normal 15 crit and again he just went ahead and used two cards um, and then I think you had a go that he came back you get the gist you see what's happening and for this one I got another Krillin just to attack and uh, awaken next turn. I'm just I'm most likely to go ahead and negate this next 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 attack with this kind of deck. By the way, he's playing the the childhood Goku that rests or looks at the top ten and uh, gets a Bulma, and then he rests one of his cards and one of my cards on the back end. But uh, with this type of deck, especially since he's an untapped two, um, well, not especially since he has he has an untapped two, but just considering that, I'm not in a rush to to kind of. Um, get the cooler out. It's more of just uh, attacking what I need to attack and pressuring where I need to pressure. And uh, for him, he's trying to, you know, uh, attack McCurlin so that way I don't have to attack more. But I'm at four. I'm not going to be attacking more than uh, I need to as far as these um, these Krillins go because I don't want to take more life. For this one, um, like I said, he's just attacking my Krillin, so I went ahead and negated, so that way I have another one. Whis is, is, is at a 4k, so he's, he's not able to attack, so, you know. And then now we're at that 4 life with the uh, the cooler in hand, both coolers in hand. But the issue here is that I don't have enough uh, coolers in drop. That's why I kept checking those drop uh, the, the drop there. And uh, I went ahead to play the, the Vegeta since he had four or more cards in rest mode and uh, it just created another uh, defense that I had uh, or another defense option but really like I said he's playing a slow playing deck I can kind of do whatever I want or at least get to the point where I need to it's just that uh, the deck wasn't liking me I had 21 cards <laughs> in in deck and uh, I wasn't able to actually find one of the uh, the cards for the uh, the cooler effect And now he's attacking one of the um, uh, the Krillins. I already went ahead and KO'd it because I really don't need that. I uh, went ahead and played the Destructive Frieza, uh, so that way I can get an, uh, again another body on the on the board, just so I can attack if need be. And then uh, I think he goes ahead and combos something here, and uh, I took the life just so I can have it um, as far as an extra card in hand. I uh, went ahead and drew something, which is the Frieza, and then charged the one cost. Uh, combo there and I finally got another one of this cooler squadron if I if I played this differently I probably would have attacked with Roshi uh, instead of her, uh, with the Frieza and then uh, combo that out so now I thankfully have three of the cooler squadron and drop I can awaken use three play the cooler and then warp out or play out the um, Roshi out of the game and then get the Frieza out so now I have one open energy, which is ideal. Now he's at three life. I can't attack because, or six life. I can't attack uh, with the with either one really, because he Nimbus, and uh, now is just uh, just kind of a waiting game. He has to create a life to do really anything, again effective, and um, this is kind of where you want to be just to to end the game later on. So he went ahead and critted. I think he was supposed to crit that. If anything, uh, that activate main effect, uh, I think he was supposed to crit that. So that was one of the misplays we both made to kind of call that out. Um, he did he did right as far as to uh, KO the cooler instead of the Frieza. And I think this is mainly because um, you know he knows he, he knows how to play the play the deck, so it's kind of expected as far as that uh, goes. And then I think he passes because I don't think he wants to attack. Oh, he does attack the Frieza. Yeah, okay. So I went ahead and uh, Nimbus because I'm going to get another cooler out. So I want to use um, the Frieza as fodder for that. So we're going to go and play that, play that. And then 
Uh, I don't think I have a. <laughs> yeah, I didn't have a target in the in the drop. I, I realized I didn't use the um, the Gogeta or not the not the Gogeta, but the free uh, the Vegeta to block in order to to get him again next turn. But uh, went ahead and just attacked with the cooler. He took the the two life. Uh, I went and went ahead and attacked with the Frieza. And uh, I just remembered that I was just like, you know what? I didn't do the effect, but um, went ahead and used the effect so that way I can go ahead and basically, because you can't counter, you can't do any of that. So I'm going for 35,000 to end the game. And I don't know if he can combo out here. So he's at, yeah, he's at 40. And now he's, I'm attacking for leader. And I just said 15. Um, and I'm just like, okay, <laughs> I'm just gonna go ahead and attack with my uh, with my technically one cost blocker, and that's pretty much it. That will do the deck kind of kind of critted. Uh, I did misplay that the the end there, but oh well. Um, it's a pretty fun deck, kind of a casual deck. Let me know what you think in the uh, the comments below, and I will definitely reply back to it. Subscribe if you're new for more of these set six decks, and I will see you in the next one. Thank you.